Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and before we get this video on the way, just like to let you guys know that I am going to be writing and producing content over on theleafsnation.com. Um, it's not going to change anything here how we do stuff here on this channel, so just wanted to let you guys know. So look for some work and possibly some other stuff that I'm going to be doing over there. And if you're new here to the channel from theleafsnation.com, um, say hello down in the comments section. I normally am pretty friendly and responsive down there, and consider subscribing. I'm on the road to a thousand here. The channel's been doing really, really well lately, and without hockey, surprisingly. But in today's video, I want to talk about my personal favorite Toronto Maple Leaf right now, and I feel like he's a lot of people's favorite player on the team right now. I mean, a lot of people really like Austin Matthews and John Tavares and Mitch Marner and William Nylander and what have you, but I really enjoy myself some Morgan Riley. Before the season got underway, a lot of people were talking about, oh, you know, the Maple Leafs are going to be naming a captain, and, you know, it could be John Tavares, it could be Austin Matthews, but I was there fighting the good fight, and I was like, you know what, it could be Captain Morgan. But if you want my personal opinion on the captaincy, I think the captaincy is more of a thing for the fans in the actual locker room itself. I think anyone can just stand up and say whatever they want at any given time, right? It's leadership by committee, or at least I would hope so. So why are we talking about Morgan Riley today? What about him specifically? Well, he's going to be a UFA at the end of the 2022 season, and a lot of people are kind of asking the question, you know, can the Maple Leafs afford to commit long-term to another player that's probably going to command a hefty amount of money? And there's a lot of factors that go into it, uh, especially considering with what's going on in the world right now, but we will talk about all of them. Time codes in the description of this video, by the way, of everything that we're going to be talking about here, but guys like Zach Hyman are going to be off the books, you know, Pierre Engvall, Tyson Berry, Cody Ceci, even Frederick Anderson by the time Morgan Riley is a UFA. Not to mention guys that might be on the trading block or traded by then, guys like Andreas Janssen, Kasperi Kapan, and Alexander Kerfoot, right? It all depends on how the Maple Leafs want to allocate their money moving forward, and we don't even know what the cap is going to be in the summer of 2022, but a lot of people, I mean, you need to understand, Morgan Riley's already making $5 million right now, and whatever raise you want to give him, it's not that new number that they need to fit under the cap, it's just the money that he's making right now plus the raise, so it's not that daunting if you look at it like that. Probably worth noting that Morgan Riley's probably on one of the better contracts around the league right now. Probably one of the better things that Lou Lamorello did as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I knew I did that whole video where I compared what Lou Lamorello did in Toronto to what Kyle Dubas has done so far. It's a 16 minute video, but I do suggest watching it because I made a lot of valid points back and forth, right? If you're going to nickel and dime one guy, you got to nickel and dime the other guy. But if we come on over to EvolvingHockey.com or Evolving Wild on Twitter, they have him projected signing an $8.9 million deal for eight seasons under an $82.5 million salary cap right now, right? It's a percentage of whatever the cap is right now, but that's because their analytic model really, really likes Morgan Riley and what he does on the ice. I don't think that it's going to be that hefty of a cost there, but you have to remember that it is an eight-year deal that they're projecting him here. As And you do have to pay a premium for those UFA years. And also, Morgan's going to be signing his retirement contract, right? The next contract that he signs is probably going to be his last big ticket in the NHL. But it's all probability, right? And they're saying, on average, they're projecting him to sign at least a six-year deal. And a six-year deal would put him at around $7.75 million, maybe $7.5 million, which, I mean, if you're talking about those numbers, I don't really hate it. But if we come on over to NHL.com here, we'll see that Morgan Riley over the last three seasons is eighth overall in defensemen in terms of points, just behind guys like Tory Krug and Tyson Berry, who we will talk about in about a minute from now, but also ahead of guys like Alex Petrangelo. Which Alex Petrangelo, you can automatically assume that he's more than likely going to sign a six, seven, or eight year deal this offseason. And that would bring him up until he's 36, 37, or 38 years old. Morgan Riley, if he were to sign a six year contract, he'd be 28 in the summer of 2022, would bring him until he's 34 years old. So not exactly the same thing because if we take a look at defensemen in the NHL over the age of 35, so 36 and up. There's not too many other guys here, and not very many of them are worth their contracts. 
Now, like I said earlier on in the video, Evolving Wild's model really does like Morgan Riley, and especially what he does offensively at even strength and on the power play, and this is sorted by expected goals above replacement, and Morgan Riley is eighth here in terms of defensemen over the last three seasons, and I mean, I don't know if I would rate him that high. That's why that contract projection that we saw earlier was eight years, $8.8 .8 million. Their model really does favor him. I don't know if I would rate him that high, but I would definitely confidently say that he's among the top 20 or 15 defensemen in the NHL. So Steven, you've thrown a lot of information at us here, but what do you think Morgan Riley eventually does sign for? Well, I kind of threw it out earlier in the video, seven and a half to seven, three quarter million dollars for six, maybe seven years. I wouldn't mind that contract at all for Morgan Riley. And for some people saying, well, that might be a little bit light. Well, yeah, the Jake Muzzin number was a little bit light. That kind of surprised us. And if they're was going to be anybody on this team right now that's one of the better players, one of the more guys at the forefront in terms of the leadership group and in terms of skill that would take a discount, I am going to hang my hat on it being Morgan Riley. Don't ask me to justify myself with the reasoning there. I don't know the guy personally. I don't know his relationship with Kyle Dubas and the Toronto Maple Leafs. But just there was that video, that Sick Kids video that they did a couple of years ago where he just comes in and he's just eating frosting and cookies. Like, if you're still upset with Mitch Marner for what happened with the contract negotiations, look no further than Morgan Riley as just the new team, just a lovable idiot, I guess, if you want to call him that. But before I go off on too much of a tangent here on how I feel, I promised you that I was going to get the Tory Krug and Tyson Berry and how they're relevant to this conversation. Well, let's bring it back over to here and we're going to see Tyson Berry and Tory Krug. Now, we've gotten an opportunity to see Tyson Berry more up close this season as he's actually played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I could confidently say that Morgan Riley is a better defenseman than Morgan Riley, but nonetheless, they're going to be in and around the same conversation, and it's going to be really interesting to see what Tyson Berry eventually signs for this offseason because of what's going on in the world, and because he is a really good comparison for Morgan Riley. And Tory Krug with the Boston Bruins is also going to be a UFA this summer, and it's going to be interesting to see how much he eventually signs for. Tory Krug probably a little bit better defensively than Morgan Riley, but also he plays on a stronger defensive team overall so maybe that's where that notion or that narrative comes from so that's just my perspective of it maybe Boston fans will, will say otherwise but if we come back to that NHL list here in terms of points over the last three seasons these guys are all separated by about 10 points or so Tory Krug as we saw on his page is 29 years old they believe the Tyson Berry is 28 years old Morgan Riley is going to be 28 years old when his contract expires they're all very good comps and also another thing that we have to remember here is that Morgan Riley is going to be able to negotiate a contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs when he's 27 years old, so about a year and a half from now, maybe. So look for Tory Krug and Tyson Berry for what they eventually sign for, because I do believe the Morgan Riley contract gets done really quickly, like the Jake Muzzin deal. I don't think that we're sitting around and wondering what's going to be going on with Morgan Riley two years from now at draft time or even July 1st. I think that that's something that gets done, like, I a month or two after he's eligible to re-sign with the Leafs. Tyson Berry, Tory Krug, two excellent comparisons for Morgan Riley. So make sure to leave me a like on this video if you did like it and subscribe for more because more is always on the way. And guys, remember, if you're going to love anyone on the Toronto Maple Leafs just unconditionally, let it be Morgan Riley. The guy's an absolute angel.